Now we're going to talk about creating user profiles and local profiles. What we want to do, we want to open up the computer management. We can right click the My Computer, open up management, Manage here. And this can open up the computer management window. Either that or we could go to Start, Settings, Control Panel, and we can open it up this way, Administrative Tools and Computer Management. The way I've got the control panel expanding, the settings are here. If we click on it, we're going to just open up Properties, Advanced Properties, and we've got a listing of the different Start Menu properties. We're able to expand printers, expand my documents. Uh, we're able to expand Control Panel. This is the one that I've got clicked off, so I'm just able to just go on top of it and it expands itself. So we're just going to close this window up here. There's a few other things here for the taskbar and the Start Menu always on top, auto hide, show small icons and start menu, show clock, and just click off, click on, and it's gonna change it's gonna change the way it's gonna look. It's displayed here how it's gonna look. So we're just gonna leave that as it is. And we're gonna go to the local users and groups. Here we're just gonna expand the users and groups. We're gonna select users and this gives us a list of the users that are allowed on the system currently. If we want to add a new user, we're able to just right click on the empty empty area here and we're given the option to add new user, refresh, export, view. This is going to be just like a, a different viewpoint that we're allowed to have. We're able to arrange the icons, auto arrange, and line up icons. So we're going to go now to create a new user. So we select that. We've got to enter a username, so we're just going to enter user or we'll just enter a new user. The full name, we've just got to give a description of a name for the user. Just going to call him the user. And his description is going to be this is a new user on the system. And we're going to give him a password. Just going to type in new confirm the password and here we've given a few options the user must change password on next login if this is selected then as the user logs in they're going to be asked to change password if we want to keep the password the same so the user is not able to change it user cannot change password so we could check this off and we could also have password never expires we could select that if we wanted to and account is disabled this is if we want to temporarily disable the account so we're just going to use your password never expires and create. So what's going to happen now? It's creating a new user. Okay, the user has been created. We can close this now and we can see that the new user that we've created is here. We've got a few buttons over here. We can either delete the user and we can see the properties of the user. There's export list here. Or we can just go on top of it, select the the user that we want to see and we've got, we're able to set a password here um, the tasks are the only tasks available for us currently are set password we're able to delete we're able to rename the person the the user and we're able to see the properties so we're just going to open up the properties now and see that um, the password never expires is what it's set to the full name the user this is the new this is the same description that I entered earlier and it shows that uh, this user is a member of users. If we want to change which group the the user is a member of, we're able to add it this way. And here we can change if we want to make this user an administrator, we could do so by adding here. And now what's what's happened now, we've added him as an administrator. So this new user is a member of the administrators. His profile some space to put to type a user profile and path and also there's a space for login script home folder and to connect so we're not going to get into that yet okay so now what we're going to do we're just going to test the new account that we've created i'm going to take them off of being a member of administrators it's just going to be a member of users so apply and close so now we're going to log on as new user. So I'm just going to stop the video and we're going to restart as of logged on as new user.
Now, in order to create a roaming user profile, we had to log on as administrator. So now we're once again, we're the administrator on the machine known as VIP. Okay, now in order to enable um, access to a roaming profile, we're gonna have to create a network share. So now we're gonna go on to the, my computer. I'm gonna choose the drive here, C drive. Okay, so we, we're just going to use this folder that we have here. It's called Folder to Share. If we want to create sharing for it, we could right-click it, and we could go down to Sharing, and in this way we could have, it would um, by default be on Do Not Share This Folder, so we're just going to allow sharing on it, Apply, and OK. And we're just going to shut this back down, and we're going to go to the Computer Manager. Right-clicking on My Computer opens up the, the Manage, and then what we did, we selected Manage, and this opens up Computer Manager window. And we're going to go down to the local users and groups. Hitting the plus sign turns into a minus sign and opens up, and we can see all the folders that are available. Okay, we're just going to continue to use the one that we created. So we want to go on to the new user. We could either create an, another user, or we're just going to use the one. Um, go to the properties. You can either do that up here or down here. So we open up the properties and we're going to go to a profile, which we looked at earlier, and we didn't get that far into it. So, so in here in the profile path, we're going to type in the computer name, which I have as Discover. Um, we're going to go into the profiles and we're going to have to type in the username, which is new user. And we're just going to kick apply and OK. And we can close this now. So now we, we've set this. We're going to close this down here. And once again, we're going to log off as administrator and we're going to log on as the new user. So I'll be shutting the video off and we're going to be coming back as new user. We're going to talk about the different um, regional options. So what we want to do, we want to go to Start, Setting, Control Panel, open up the Control Panel, and select Regional Options. This opens up a window with a number of tabs here at the top. We've got the General Numbers, Currency, Time, Date, and Input Locales. So here we've got a listing of different locales that are available to us. By selecting these, it also changes the the set up in numbers, currency, time, and date. So we just got to keep that in mind when we are setting. Language settings, it specifies which language uh, group are currently installed and available on your computer. So here at the advanced button we're able to add, remove code page conversion tables, so we're just going to press that. And we're going to open up the different code page conversion tables that are available to us, and here it's got a listing could select these as we need to. Just going to cancel that. And we're going to go on to the numbers. And this is the appearance samples, how the positive number is going to appear, how the negative number is going to appear, and we've got some more settings on the appearance. Um, currency, it's in dollars because we're selected the United States. As we select different input locales, we are able to change the settings and currency also along to be um, compatible with what is set in the input locales. The time, we've got the time setting, the time format, we're able to change how it looks, time separate or AM, PM, and the date, we're able to just uh, change the different dates. And here on the last one, input locales, listing of the different uh, language and keyboard layouts that are loaded into your memory every time you start the computer, and we can add by Opening up here, we've got a different uh, list once again of different locales we can add. Um, different keyboard layouts that we can also add. And we've got a listing of the properties. Okay, we don't really need to change that right now. Okay, down here we've got um, 
to turn off caps lock. Now just the caps lock key. We can either turn on the caps lock by the caps lock key or we can turn on the caps lock by the shift key, whichever is the preference of the user. Okay, and here we've got um, a listing of the different keys that we can use to switch between locales. Right now we don't have any keys, keys set up, so we're going to go here to change key sequence. And we can choose left, we can choose control plus shift and plus the one key. And this will change between the different locales. And this will give us the ability to do so. So I just as an example, I'm just going to add in one of the takes French Belgium selected and as we can see it's also been added down here so what we want to do we're going to make a key sequence for it we're going to choose left alt shift zero key and we're going to open up a document such as wordpad and we can see here I'm typing and I'm pressing actually the letter A S D and my letters are changed a little bit here so um, in order to change back, what we do is we press Alt Shift Zero, and now our, our letters are changed back to what they were originally. So you can see that there's a little bit of a blinking as I do it. Let's select this again, and we can see the little lines that appear underneath it, and that means that we're switching back to what our original was. That's just a little demonstration, and you could just try that yourself. Let's close this down. And we're just going to remove this because I don't want to have this on my keyboard. Apply. No. And OK.